As we explained with the last video where I made a score system without the usage of a canvas, you can actually draw many things on screen without the need of using the Armoury 2D editor and this allows much more control and it's much more dynamic. So for example we have images that can appear on screen, we have lines, we can have rays, we can have shapes, we can have objects. All these kind of things can all be done within the node tree. So let's get started. The first thing we'll cover is how to make an image overlay to follow an object. Now this is rather simple and like usual we need to start with a on render 2D node because this is essentially the same thing as an on update node but it happens specifically for uh, on screen uh, overlays. So we can go ahead and draw an image. Now we need to select an image and just like last video we need to go to our project folder and create a bundled folder. The bundled folder is essentially your assets folder, make sure it's spelt correctly and here you can paste in your image. Rename it for convenience because this name's rather long and now we can just link it as in youtube.png. Now last thing you need to do is give it a resolution because if not it will be 0x0 zero zero pixels. So once we have any resolution we like we can actually play it and you can see we have our image in there. It's a little bit distorted but we'll deal with that later. What we can do is actually scale it down and you probably would want to go with the actual resolution of the image but we can go ahead and get the object's location so we can actually paste the image onto the object so I drop the object you want now we need to do a little bit of sorting with these vectors so we can actually sort out the world to screen coordinates by getting the world to screen node and add in a vector math so we can actually add some more control and finally we need to separate out the x, y and z vectors as in uh, plug the result into the vector and now we've got the x that we can plug into the x, y into the y and there we go, now we have the coordinates set up properly so when we play this it's somewhat in the vicinity but it needs adjusting so what we're going to do is we can change the resolution now I'm really doing a guessing game here but you should really go on the predefined resolution as in scale down the image to start with we can go ahead and turn on live patching so we can modify the object's location while it's opening a window and I obviously have to use the desk pin application which is a, an external application that I have to download to pin the window in place so it doesn't disappear so once we have that you pin the window and yet now you can modify these values down here and we can change it however when I slide the values there is a slight problem there's a, a sort of glitchy bug that happens when I slide the value of the vector math node that locks it after a specific time. So what we can do is we can modify these values by just typing them in. If you try to slide it, there's a likelihood that it's going to lock and you're not going to be able to move it anymore, you have to restart it. So if we just add in the values, uh, I'm actually trying to get it to the center uh, by just incrementing the values a bit in the minus or positive values to go up and down the grid. And there we go, now we have our image in place. Now what we can do is we're going to go ahead to the army trait of the cube and add in a move player, a simple move player in the bundled script. And this is just going to allow us to simply move a player with the keyboard, the default. Uh, allows you to use your keyboard to just move the player and you can see that our object is in the center of our image and we are moving. We can actually change the tint and uh, this is rather useful, not in my case, but in your case it will probably be a useful in your specific situation to be able to change the tint of the image. We can actually do this at runtime but there is the same problem of it uh, freezing up. So uh, just be aware that Live Patch has its limitations, it's more so a sort of hack. And let's move on. We can create lines by adding yet another render 2D node and actually drawing a line with the draw line node. Now this is a little different because we have two different spots that we have uh, have to fill in. We have the beginning and the end of the line. So what we can do is we can get two objects location and draw a line between them. So we can select the cube for example if we move it up and into a, a corner or anywhere on screen and then we can grab Suzanne. And what we want to do now is we want to get the world to screen coordinates so we can convert that and we can do the same thing for both of the objects and then what we need to do is we need to separate out the uh, x, y and z coordinates because we need to get them individually, we need to get the x and y coordinates and plug them into the x and y in the draw node so you can see there we're plugging in on the top and then x, y number 2 on the bottom and now it's going to draw a blue line and you can control the thickness and it's going to draw in between the objects and if we actually pin this down here you can see we can modify this at runtime because we have live patch and we can increase the thickness and you see it's, it's very useful 
What's even more useful is that you can move around uh, the cube and it will dynamically update this line that we've created. So it has a lot of potential. Armory 3D has a lot of node shapes and things that you can do with the draw node. So for example, we have a circle. So if we change the color of the circle and actually get the object uh, location as we've done previously, and then obviously use the world to screen coordinate that we've done all the times previously. So we can actually add in a separate XYZ node. So we need the X and the Y to plug into the center X and the center Y. We can augment the radius, change the amount of segments, and this acts pretty much like a 3D uh, model inside of Blender with sort of polygons. So we can augment the segments and it makes the resolution higher. We can actually uh, augment it to something much higher and change the radius. And we can actually disable field so we can just have the outline visible. Now this gives us a lot of control and it's even more important that we can actually move this object, uh, this cube around and this uh, circle that we've created, we've drawn above it, will follow it around. So a lot of people have been saying they wanted to make uh, 2D styled games inside of Arm 3D. Well, it, more than ever, now it's possible, especially with the ability to import images and just overlay it on, side of, on top of objects. And obviously using the 3D objects for collisions and stuff like that. It's not ideal because it's not designed for 2D games, but having a 2D element inside your 3D games it's it's perfect for that and I highly recommend you go figure out and try to use the other nodes that I haven't shown in this video I haven't shown them because it gets repetitive it's pretty much the same method but now that I've shown you these basics I think you should go out and figure out what you want to do with these draw nodes and try and figure out how to do it and by doing that and figuring things out for yourself based on these tutorials you should be able to uh, understand and learn much better and remember these lessons that I teach you. Also thank you very much for the community who are participating in this channel. If you have a blend file that you want me to uh, have a look at and talk about uh, in one of these videos like I'm doing right now then you can send it to my email armorycommunity at gmail.com or if you have like a screen recording that doesn't have any voiceover or a, a screen recording a natural video that has voiceover and everything's done and you want to upload it to this channel just send me an email and I'll give you access to upload it uh, onto this channel because it's a community channel it doesn't work if the community doesn't participate so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again someday